I don't feel like I'm quite presentable to do this episode quite yet. So hold on a second. Not home of Zach, make up! That's better. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, good your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. If you're new around here, on Thursdays, we take a look at things before the year 2000. Today's episode is brought to you by CalFro on Patreon. Signing up for the $25 tier makes me do an episode on anything you want me to do. So, we're doing Sailor Moon today. Now, I personally have never seen Sailor Moon before. I knew about it in the same way that I knew about Dragon Ball and Pokemon and the anime of the late 90s. These were things that a lot of people my age grew up with, and yet I, I just didn't. All I knew about Sailor Moon was that it was a magical girl anime. It was clearly targeted towards little girls, and yet it was still very influential in the anime world. Well, I'm not a girl, but I still watched 46 episodes of this show, so today we're going to be asking the question, does Sailor Moon hold up? For those that don't know anything about it, Sailor Moon was originally a Japanese manga that was published in 1991 with its anime adaptation starting in 1992 by Toei Animation. Having a total of five seasons, today we're only going to be talking about the first season which covers the Dark Kingdom arc in 46 episodes. Now, since this anime is from the 90s, there are multiple versions of the series. There's the original Japanese sub, then there's the original English dub from Dick Productions, which features a decent amount of American censorship. This is the version that you probably watched as a kid. Then in 2014, Viz Media did their own version of the dub, which you can currently watch on Hulu, and that's the version I watched. It's technically better, and it doesn't have all that censorship from the late 90s. Oh, and also there's Sailor Moon Crystal, which is a complete revamp of the series. I haven't seen that one yet, so we're not going to be talking about it. Sailor Moon follows a 14-year-old girl named Usagi Tsukino as she finds out that she is a Sailor Guardian. With the power of three-minute animation sequences, she can transform from regular Usagi to magical girl Sailor Moon. The first season also introduces five other Sailor Guardians, Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars, Sailor Jupiter, and Sailor Venus. Sailor Jupiter is best girl, by the way. As they discover their newfound powers, they're forced to fight the Dark Kingdom, a group of evil people who want to take over the world. Even though this is the 90s, think very much in the same vein as an 80s cartoon when it comes to the plot. Sailor Moon is targeted towards young girls. This is a quote-unquote girly show for all intents and purposes. From the overarching themes of love and oh I gotta get a boyfriend to the overly animated eyes, uses of hearts and accents everywhere, the bright colors, and the fact that there is a mostly female cast. This is one of the things that this show does right. While it does have elements from other girly shows from this time, by the way, I have four younger sisters, so I've seen my fair of these shows growing up. Sailor Moon has these same aesthetic choices while also having a very relatable cast of strong female characters. This is probably one of the main reasons that this show is seen as such a big catalyst in the anime community. Not only that, it is one of the first mainstream magical girl anime paving the way for that genre. But all that aside, as you can see, I am a 23 year old adult male. This show is not targeted towards me. So what does this show have for people that are not little girls. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be completely real with you. Sailor Moon is low-key dope. <laughs> when I went into this show, I definitely expected a lot of cute magical girls doing magical things, taking down some monsters, living happily ever after. Instead, what I got was a show that had actual stakes, entertaining fight scenes, charming characters, and a lot, hear me out, a lot of filler. <laughs> there is so much filler, but we're gonna get to that in a bit. Because my favorite thing about this show is that it does have stakes. It takes risks. There are characters that die. And not just once, multiple times. There is character growth. We see how events impact each of the main characters and even some of the side characters. While most of its plot is very by the numbers and it is very by the numbers. Again, we'll talk about that in a bit. The character interactions is what makes Sailor Moon enjoyable. And it's the main reason why, even though they could have told this story in like 13 episodes, I actually am glad that I watched all 46 episodes. I'm surprised that even though there were a couple of episodes that weren't the most exciting, overall I enjoyed more episodes than I thought I would. But let's get into these less exciting episodes. Let's get into the plot and the structure of the plot. 
which consists of a lot of filler. While I am glad that I watched all 46 episodes, I would be remiss to say that this show could have definitely been shorter and that's because of its episodic structure. So the way that this season is set up, we have essentially four different sections of the main plot. The first 13 episodes introduces Sailor Moon, Sailor Mercury, and Sailor Mars. We also get the introduction of Jedi, one of the evil kings of the Dark Kingdom. In every episode, he curses some kind of item that ends up taking energy from humans, and this is where we get the standard episode plot played out in front of us. The first two minutes are the opening. We then get a recap from Usagi about how she's Sailor Moon and she's going to punish some people. It's kind of kinky, but then you remember that she's... 14 years old even though she looks older and it gets a little weird but it's anime so you know anyways the recap takes about a minute then somewhere in there we get a little bit of an introduction to the episode then we see jedi talking to queen barrel the ultimate evil character in the show he's talking about how he has this plan to steal a bunch of energy from humans and how he'll get rid of sailor moon and the rest of the sailor guardians then usagi hears about some new strange thing in town like a new clock or a cruise or an exercise class that thing becomes evil and steals a bunch of energy then we get like a two minute transformation sequence from Usagi and her friends. She almost loses. Tuxedo Mask, a mysterious figure that Usagi ends up falling in love with later on, steps in and saves her. They stop the evil thing in the episode with a two minute ending song. Then we rinse and repeat. That's just about every episode in the first 13 episodes. Never mind. That's just about every episode in the entire show. Because once Jedi steps away, we get a new bad guy named Nephrite. The exact same episodic sequence happens except this time Nephrite makes certain items evil. Then after Nephrite is gone, Zoysite comes in and he turns people into monsters. And finally we get Kunzai who does kind of a mixture of everything else the rest of them had done. But long story short, each episode for the most part has a monster of the week type of thing going on in the plot. And I have to say, some of these monsters were really really dope. It was a really great episode in that regard. But then some of them were just like downright weird like this bitch has got snowmen for boobies like what, what's up with that i mention all this because while i did enjoy watching the season it was a bit tough to get through in a short span of time this is not particularly a show i think you'd want to binge except for maybe the last 13 episodes once the main plot really starts to come in and you get really hyped for it in fact the first few episodes i was really wondering why this show was as popular as it was because those episodes were fine it just felt like I was watching a kid's show. Also, I wasn't completely sold on Usagi's character until later on. She was this very whiny, annoying child who never quite grows up. Luckily, her character does grow and I enjoy it later on. Filler aside, there are stakes in the show and this is something that I really enjoyed about it. Especially around the 24 episode mark where shit starts hitting the fan. It's like, I wanted to get through the rest of the show as fast as possible because it was getting dope. And I don't want to go into spoilers, but we're going to go into spoilers. So real quick, to get my full thoughts of the show on, here, here's spoilers. In the last couple of episodes, the Sailor Guardians are on their way into the Dark Kingdom, and every single one of them, every single one of them, except for Sailor Moon, gets f***ing killed. Like, they just die. And my favorite goes first. Sailor Jupiter dies first. And piss me off. Anyways, finale happens. We get this big amazing scene with Sailor Moon. We got the ghosts of like all the girls like hovering around her, helping her out. She defeats all the evil and then everything just goes back to normal. Like everything. Everybody that died, yeah, they're alive again. Uh, Usagi no longer knows any of the other Sailor Guardians. They're not friends anymore. As a matter of fact, they're not Sailor Guardians either. Their, their love interests, yeah, those are gone too. Everything that we had been building up for 46 episodes. Where like each episode is really only seven minutes long because of all the transitions and transformations and intro and outro and all that kind of stuff. Either way, hours and hours of building and growing these characters just completely disappears at the end of the finale. And I know that once season two, once I sit down to watch season two, because I'm going to try to do it eventually. Like, they're gonna like regain their memories probably. But bruh, if this didn't piss me off, I can't, I can't tell you what else did. Anyways, coming out of spoilers, does Sailor Moon hold up? Overall, I did enjoy myself watching it. Even the filler was enjoyable to a certain extent. While I was annoyed by the overly long animations in the first few episodes, by the second half of the season, I was singing along to the music and screaming, Moon Healing Escalation! 
However, this is very much a product of its time. When anime and cartoons were mainly watched on Saturday mornings, and you needed recaps to remember what was happening in the show. So, in certain aspects, Sailor Moon doesn't hold up. It has a ton of episodes that follow the exact same structure. The overall narrative could be told in a much shorter season. I'm very interested in how Sailor Moon Crystal does it because it is 13 episodes compared to 46 episodes. And I hope that like they're able to take the original charm of the series and make it into a more coherent, quicker story. Either way, going through 46 episodes, I don't think it's quite worth it to get through all the good stuff. But... I will say, there is a reason that Sailor Moon is held in such a high regard in the anime community. If you like anime at all, if you're interested in the history of anime, you want to watch more 90s anime, then I would argue you need to watch Sailor Moon. It doesn't hold up to today's standards in anime, but it does have some very interesting and charming characters, an interesting story, and yes, it has a lot of fluff, but a lot of that just so happens to be charming as well. But for me, I don't regret watching this. I am going to try to watch the other four seasons and Crystal at some point in the future. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how that holds up. I don't know. I'm curious. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Your Everyday Nerd Patreon. I love making this show. And one of the biggest challenges that I currently have is that I can't dedicate as much time to the show as I would like to. As a freelance video editor, a lot of my time goes to editing for other people so that I can do that thing called paying bills. But I really do believe that Your Everyday Nerd has a lot of potential to be something bigger and greater. And that's why I'm asking for your help. If you've been enjoying the show and wondered how can I support this show as much as possible, the Patreon is where it's at. My main goal for this Patreon was to give you something in return for your money. This is not just a donation service. Every single tier has something in addition to your regular Your Everyday Nerd episodes. For only $7 a month, you'll have access to an exclusive premium episode of the show every single month. These episodes will be more involved than your traditional episode. They'll have a lot more work put into them, hopefully will be a lot more entertaining, and they'll definitely be worth it. Every premium episode is exclusive to Patreon only for six months. After the six months, it'll go out to the public, but you'll have access to that entire back catalog as long as you're a subscriber. Along with the premium episodes, you'll also be a part of the decision process of the show moving forward. You'll be credited in the end card of new episodes, have access to any Patreon exclusive content like lists, extra reviews, and all that good stuff, and have access to the patron only Discord channel. Thank you again for watching and for supporting your everyday nerd. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for reason you didn't like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Sailor Moon are, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.